Verstappen made it nine wins in a row for the second time in his Formula 1 career. If that doesn't highlight the dominance of this Red Bull, I don't know what does. Maybe the fact that Sergio Perez can actually finish second also highlights it. But yeah, we had the Jera Grand Prix, but the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. And in terms of the top ten, well, the top nine, actually, it was pretty bland. It was pretty boring, as F1 is expected to be these days. The best thing about this race was Kevin Magnussen holding pretty much the entire grid up just to benefit his tag team partner a point. Yeah, massive battle for all these guys and none of them were even playing for a point. It was Magnussen's teammate that was playing for the point. Ah, uh, sad times in F1. It is sad times in F1. You know, and I've then got... you've got to wonder as well, I mean, was the correct, was the penalty they gave Magnussen the correct decision when he was still able to play a big part in his team securing points? Yep. I mean, Haas won't really care. That didn't, that didn't disadvantage Haas. That didn't penalise Haas because they still managed to get a point. <laughs> and see, to be honest, see if Magnussen doesn't get that penalty, I'd argue Haas get no points. It's actually better they got the penalty. Because Magnussen was going to be out for himself and not out for his teammate. But when he got the penalty, the two penalties, he thought, well, you know what? I can no longer do anything here. Let me just compromise my race to try and help my teammate. Whereas without that penalty... Had he just been told to allow Shiroda back through, then Magnussen would have just been going out for himself, and I don't think either Haas driver would have gotten the point. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird, but by dishing out those two 10-second penalties, it actually benefited Haas. And... Why not just tell Magnussen to let Shinoda through, right? And obviously, I've got a bone to pick, because I needed Shinoda in the points, but as soon as it was so hard to overtake the day, right? I am convinced, well... Saturday. I am convinced if Shinoda didn't get overtook by Magnussen, he'd have finished 10th because we seen with Norris and Hamilton, even on fresh softs, they couldn't get anywhere near Behrman, right? They finished three seconds behind them, despite closing the gap in. The only cars that could really overtake in this race were the Red Bulls because they're overpowered, all right? Yeah, they can overtake every race. Yeah, they so. can overtake anything. And Shinoda, Hulkenberg was able, right, doing a, 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 a zero stop race. Mm hmm. To come out ahead when he actually made his pit stop despite being on like 40 odd lap tyres. That shouldn't be allowed to happen. Yeah, I mean, you've got, well, there's nothing against the rules, but Magnussen was driving a hell of a lot slower than he than he could have. And I don't know how they, they prevent that. I mean, are they going to make a rule where you have to drive within. No, I think, no. It, it's... I know there's the qualifying 107% rule. If you ever take someone off the track, it should be, you have to let them through. And I don't care if they fell behind another three cars, you have to let them through. You see Sunoda, right? See when Hulkenberg came out the pits, say we're about, what, 15 laps to go? He would have been about 18 seconds ahead of Hulkenberg if Magnussen never got ahead of him. And my bet would be up. Well, I'd I, be sitting here with 150 quid. Well, I still think you should be able, I think you should be allowed to drive as slow as you want to. But in this case, it, it almost was cheating because... It's not like Magnussen was driving slow to save his tires or to save fuel or anything like that. He was he was literally backing everybody up just to benefit his teammate. And I mean, normally I would have an issue with that, but he's only in front of Shinoda because of an illegal manoeuvre. So was it fair? Probably not. But look, the fact that we're talking so much about Magnussen and Shinoda and fucking Hulkenberg for one point just shows you how bad the race was. So yeah, another one-two for Red Bull. Leclerc got forward. I hear people saying that Beerman should be given a seat for next season. Why? Because the guy scored, what, seventh place in a Ferrari? It's yeah. hardly the most impressive thing ever. Ferrari is, is the second fastest car. I think that's undoubtedly... I mean, you're seeing a pretty similar gap between Red Bull and Ferrari that you're seeing between Ferrari and the rest. But I think this kind of shows you the people now that are watching F1. It's, oh, look at Beerman. I mean, they, maybe they find him cute and therefore they want him on the, the grid for next season, but... Yo, it's a good drive for the guy, but yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pretend it's great. Yeah, it's not I mean it's decent, pretty good debut, you know. He beat Norris it. and Hamilton, but they were on pretty shite strategies. But there's already I heard people saying, Oh, we need to get him in a house or something. What, so Magnussen and, and Hulkenberg should lose their seat just because some guy came in a Ferrari and finished seventh? Doesn't make any sense. Probably not, um but yeah. Lance Stroll crashed it. Lance Stroll does what Lance Stroll does at this stage of the game. The guy is so bad. Like if he has, if Alonso had a decent teammate, man, he would be able to challenge in the constructors and actually have backup in races. The guy's immense. Well, it would be challenging Red Bull, but I get your point. No, but like it, it, would, be, it would be easier for Alonso though if he had a teammate to help him to hold people up. Like, the guy's just shite. 
Um, Alpine are absolutely awful. And, I mean, that's pretty much where we're going to leave it. Mercedes are awful in the high-speed corners as well. The McLarens were pulling about seven tenths in sector one alone on them. I tell you what, Alonso doesn't get it right very often when it comes to moves, but I think him moving from Alpine to Austin Martin was a good decision. Yeah, best one he's probably made in his career, apart from Minardi to Renault. Yes. I'd say, I think it's safe to say. But anyway, guys, till next time, that's your Saudi Arabian Grand Prix review. Next up, Down Under.